In part three of this exterior car detailing playlist, we are talking about paint and glass decontamination. What's going on? So glad you're here and welcome back to the Wilson Auto Detailing community. If you're a professional auto detailer or a car enthusiast who just loves everything auto detailing, then definitely consider subscribing. So this part three is going to be pretty simple. There's basically two different steps I use in a decontamination stage. Now, generally speaking, with a full paint decontamination on a car that would be polished, I would be using something like like Iron X or some sort of iron decontaminant, right? Now basically the first part of this decontamination process that I'm going to be using, um, I'm gonna be using a solution of optimum no rinse and distilled water, one single cap full of optimum no rinse and then the rest of this spray bottle is filled up with distilled water, so like 32 ounces, right? Then I've got my clay bar right here and I'm not using all of it, you can see there's still a lot of clay left here. I'm just using a smaller kind of a piece of it, no need to use more than that. And I'm going to be drying all of that clay bar our lubricant off with this Max Shine towel. This is an ultra plush drying towel. It's huge, it works fantastically, and I love it. Of course, I'm gonna hook up all this stuff in the description box below. So, I'm going to be clay barring the paint here. So let's go ahead and clay bar the paint as the first step in decontaminating this paint. Now, a quick, just couple kind of nuggets of wisdom and couple notes as I'm doing this. When it's the summertime, clay barring paint like this that's really dark colored can be kind of difficult uh, because you have your lubricant that flash dries, which makes things very difficult. And then, of course, the paint is just so hot, it's very difficult to kind of get enough solution onto the paint that makes it slippery enough to be able to move a clay bar around effectively in the wintertime, and again, particularly in this scenario in the wintertime because I'm in the shade. This is very, very easy to do, and I don't have to use all that much lubricant. So you guys saw how much I was using. A lot of detailers are like, man, you're a hack, you're not doing it right, you don't know what you're talking about, you need to use more lubricant than that. The truth is, you just don't need to waste product and waste your time spraying a ton that you're gonna have to wipe up, particularly in the winter time when it's not gonna flash dry, and then on top of that, in 35 degree weather in the shade. It's just a non-issue. Now again, just like I would in any other scenario, I break up the car into sections so you guys see, again, because of the context of the climate and the shade, I'm able to do an entire panel like this, the entire hood, kind of in one fail swoop. So when I get finished with that, I will go ahead and take my Max Shine Ultra Plush drying towel and honestly, I'm just gonna drape it across like this and very simply kind of pull it across the paint so that I kind of get everything very quickly, very easily. It doesn't take much time. Generally, you know, you can buff off kind of that little tiny, uh, those little water droplets that are left, you can buff those off. The reason I'm not doing that and I'm not really afraid of streaking is again, when you're in this kind of weather, when you're in the shade, number one, it's not gonna cause water spots because it's distilled water. There's nothing to spot in it, right? It's totally distilled water. Number two, the climate, it's not gonna dry the water quick enough or in a certain way that's going to cause water spots. And number three, because of those two factors, when I come in with a wax in step four in the protection and the dressing phase, that wax is going to totally take off any of the streaking that happened as I was doing this. So I just, I'm just not gonna waste my time buffing it off. Now just a quick note as I'm kind of doing the front areas here, one of the goals that I have as I'm decontaminating the front end is to remove any of the excess bugs that were left um, after the car soap that I used. Basically because of the car soap I used with the degreaser kind of splashed in there, and then of course those two two soaps on top of each other. Generally speaking, a combination like that is going to easily remove like 60 to 70% of the bugs if you just use a little bit of pressure, even just with something like a microfiber towel um, like I did here in this particular scenario. Now again, everything in context, right? If you're living in Florida, you're living in Texas and you have that love bug problem where cars are just hammered with bugs, then you might be you know, removing something more like 20 to 30%. But again, in this situation, this car was not necessarily hammered with bugs. It wasn't too uh, intense and so because I'm using a clay bar decontaminating here rather than breaking it into two steps because there's just not a lot of bugs left on the front end in the first place I'm just gonna go ahead and combine the kind of bug removal and clay barring 
process into one single step rather than creating more work for myself. Now after I do this, I am going to come back with some Citral degreaser and just kind of check my work to make sure I didn't miss anything. But you guys can see I'm just being a little bit more focused here on the front end for that reason because I want to make sure that I am removing any of the bugs that might be left here. So now the entire car has been decontaminated with a clay bar. So I'm going to take you guys around and show you the dried finish just so you can see it. Throw the towel up there. So again, it's in the shade. It's going to be flattering. Again, things in the sun. You can see a lot more of those swirls and things like that. But no need for this video in particular to see all of that. Now, one of the issues that I was having here is that when you spray the Optimum No Rinse uh, lubricant on there before you actually use the clay bar because it's in the shade probably like 30 degrees right now the liquid literally freezes onto the paint and so the only problem with that really is that you're gonna need to have a little bit of warm water solution here to use the clay bar in there to kind of soften it up and then of course it'll um, rub across the paint no problem and then that liquid will not freeze because you can work in smaller panels but again you guys can see up here some of these areas I'm gonna have to kind of de-thaw before you put any sort of protection on them and of course before polishing it so, that is what the paint looks like after clay bar, decontamination, washing, all that sort of stuff. And I'll take you guys in for a little bit of a closer look there on a couple different areas. And uh, of course there's some scratching things of that nature but here's the last step that I want to show you before um, the part four of the actual protecting dressing phase this is the last thing I do in this decontamination phase so in the decontamination this part three phase one of the other things that I like to do is get a little bit more detailed like we talked about that funnel earlier you start really general and then kind of the the, the cleaner you get the more further down the road in the detailing process you get you get more specific as well and so one of the things that I have to address are these areas in here that you really can't fit your hand or a microfiber towel or a wash mitt in there as, as well as you could something like a small detailing brush and so basically what I'm gonna do and for the sake of this video and for the sake of time I'm only gonna do it to the front area but in, in, in a lot of situations on different vehicles there's tiny little black trim grills tiny little uh, kind of cracks and crevices with different materials all around the car so I would actually do this same exact process to those other things around the car should there be something like like this um, that I need to be more detailed and get into those cracks get into those little seams of the vehicles and that way I'm not missing anything so basically what I'm gonna do before I apply my chemicals I'm just gonna take a little bit of water and I'm just gonna get these areas a little bit uh, wet here and I'm gonna try to do this quickly because it's below freezing and so everything is freezing out here but I'm gonna get this headlight right there all this area down here. All right, then I'm gonna take my citral degreaser, my citrus base degreaser. Of course, I'm gonna hook this up in the YouTube description box below as well. I'm gonna take my citrus degreaser. No, this is not diluted. And I'm just gonna spray a little bit in these certain areas. So I'm gonna get, let's see here, try to get a good spray there, just like this, up in here. And there, yes, this is safe for the paint. I'm not holding it on the paint for a super long time. And then I'm just gonna take my soft detailed brush and I'm literally just gonna agitate it in these areas. The reason I'm using Citral is because it's such an effective cleaner when it comes to bugs, tar, um, and of course just loose grease and grime. So because these areas are so difficult to clean, I wanna get a fairly strong cleaner that I can just kind of very softly agitate with a brush. So that um, it's very, it just makes it much easier to clean. And so very simply, that's why I do that. I wanna get in these cracks around this headlight because it's very difficult to get in those seams. And I basically just agitate it just like this on both sides. And that way, when things dry, I didn't miss anything. And everything looks clean when it's wet. But unfortunately, when it dries, it kind of shows what you did and didn't do. And so I don't want to have to go back over anything as I'm doing this. So I quickly just kind of get in all these seams. And then just like I did before, I'm just going to take my hose and rinse it all off. 
So I dried it off, but a lot of this is gonna have to dry on its own, so there's gonna be a lot of dripping, as you can see. And again, it's just gonna have to kinda air dry. Uh, it's very difficult to dry those areas completely. But basically now, what's gonna happen is, when this dries, it's just gonna be that clean, black, plastic trim material, and I can dress it with some sort of light aerosol can dressing if I want to, and that way there's no dirt left. And again, we're not generalizing, we're detailing. And so, even though this seems extreme, you know, maybe, but that is kind of part of the job, right, is getting all the details. I do wanna show you real fast an example of kind of what I'm talking about as far as around the car when you might have to use citral and a brush in a case where you miss some of the details right so right here this seam this back bumper is coming off a little bit and that does make it a little bit more difficult and kind of gives more leeway for dirt to get in there but basically what happens is like you can see right here and you might not be able to see it but there's some dirt build up in there that's going to be that's not you're not going to get that with washing it's gonna, it's too hard to like shove a mitt or a microfiber towel in there and so i'm just going to take that brush very lightly agitate it with some citral degreaser and then wipe that off and maybe hose it off as well to rinse it out and then quickly wipe it off and that way i'm not missing anything any of the details again like right here it's these small things you have to think about getting that brush in there so that's just two quick examples of um, kind of what I'm talking about as far as cleaning in this sort of strategy in other areas of the car as well and again this is the decontamination phase so we're getting more detailed um, and this is kind of the final tip of the funnel before we start dressing and protecting so we got to make sure that all that dirt is taken care of even the dirt that you can't really see that well. So there you have it. That is part three of this exterior detailing process and sequence. Now, it is important again to understand that you have to apply context to all these videos. And so with exterior detailing and with interior detailing, you know, this is my kind of four step process. Again, this part three of this four part series. However, there are situations where you're going to kind of like adjust your strategy. And so while this is generally what I do, this is not, you know, everything that I do. It's not all the products I always use. It's not an end all be all. This is just kind of a general foundation for the exterior detailing process, the sequence that should be used, and of course some products and chemicals that would help you. If you want to check out any of the products or chemicals or tools that I used in this video, check out the YouTube description box below. I hook up Amazon links to everything that I use so you guys can buy those. If you do buy them through my links, it gives this channel a small commission, but it helps this channel stay alive. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, and as always, any questions, comments, concerns can go in the YouTube comments below below. I always read those and answer those as fast as I can. And listen, if you're new here and you're a pro detailer or just a car enthusiast who loves everything auto detailing, then definitely consider subscribing. Again, thank you guys for being involved here. And as always, from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard and I'll see you guys in the next video.